This is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24-7 World Radio. Eric John Phelps. On January 18th, 2017, this Wednesday, again, welcome to the broadcast. Well, I trust you're having a lovely day today, and we are going to cover a couple of things concerned. And uh, the foremost news on the minds of most people is the coming inauguration of 33rd degree Freemason, apostate white Protestant, Donald Trump, Protestant, Donald Trump. Now, he said many, many good things, vast majority of which I am in total agreement with because they're biblical in their principles. That's right. Ungodly men can espouse biblical principles and the Lord can use biblical principles and the Lord can use ungodly men for good. And the vast majority of things that he has espoused are biblical. They build nationalism. They build a rugged individual. They don't want government to be dependent, people to be dependent on every bite of food from the government. To be dependent on every bite of food from the government. He rightfully opposes the socialist communist Democrats because you see the the Democratic Party is the communist party. They're violent, they are violent, they are intolerant, and they're out for blood on the 20th of January. And this is exactly what the Jesuits want, a miscegenated race mixed. Now it appears to be nearly half of them are these majority savage white people and love socialism and think that, that all white men owe them. It's just the mentality the Jesuits want because that mentality will serve as a justification to then riot, rape, and murder as they do in every. Why do you think the Jesuits with their white power structure have run drugs into the black communities for the last 60 years to destroy marriage, to impoverish the place to enable them to get get access to drugs that they would never be able to get access to without the mafia and the CIA working together to get the drugs in their communities. You read the book Dark Alliance by Gary Webb. Read it. He paid with his life for that book. The least we can do is read it. We can do is read it. I had one student just last week, one black gentleman from Florida, spent 21 years in prison. 15 years of him was because of selling cocaine. Where did the cocaine come from? How was he able to get the cocaine? From the white powers to the black communities to further embolden them in crime and violence and poverty, all enabled by the Pope's Democratic Party to the end that they can bring all of these blacks to be used as a tool to for a black for a black on white race war that's already begun as I've warned for the last 15 years to then be used as the justification to lock down the cities impose martial law bring the tanks in and it's not just going to be american tanks and Amer- used as the justification to lock down the cities, impose martial law, bring the tanks in, and it's not just going to be American tanks and American soldiers. They're going to bring in NATO response forces. They're all, they're already planning to come to Washington when the riots begin there sometime in the future. Don't know if it's this coming week, but NATO response forces are composed of the Germans, the French, and others 
that when they get to the capital and other places, it's going to be mow them down. Privilege to listen to this former Black Panther. His name was uh, Mason Weaver. Mason Weaver. If you get a chance to listen to this guy, he's really good. He was a former Black Panther. He was on, uh, um, oh, what's his name? That new gentleman that's on the Fox News. I'll lose me right now. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson had this guy on a couple nights ago. His name was Mason, Mason Weaver. And this ex-Black Panther just completely attacked the blacks for being members of the Democratic Party. Shame on them all that wherever the black Democrats rule, there's drugs. And it's been that way for years. I mean, this guy, he said, we never, in the, when we were the Black Panthers, we never wanted a special treatment. We wanted to have a, the opportunity so we could prosper. And he said, we never wanted government to take care of us. Everything that came out of his mouth, I just about agreed with. I thought, praise God. Everything that came out of his mouth, I just about agreed with. I thought, praise God. Tucker Carlson's got this decent black man on here who was a former Black Panther, Mason Weaver. If I was Trump, I'd appoint him to my cabinet somewhere. So, <clears throat> but this is what they want. This is what they want. I mean, accusing Trump of being a racist? Where is this racism? Where is this hateful racism towards blacks? Where is this hateful racism towards the Hispanics? He's hired thousands of Hispanics. The fact of the matter is he's not a hateful racist. This is the shibboleth of the demonist whites of the Northeast here, which are all, for the most part, Roman Catholic and hate the Bible. Uh, Roman Catholic Hollywood, Bible-rejecting Hollywood, that's why it's left-wing socialist communist to incite civil, un civil unrest, which was the purpose of Louis Farrakhan's Nation of Islam. He confessed this to one of my uh, acquaintances that I met. His name was Matt. And Matt said to me, Farrakhan said his purpose was to incite civil war. You listen, mother. You listen, Muslims, black, black Muslims of the Nation of Islam, your Farrakhan is no uh, loyal individual to the black people of this country. He's been an FBI informant since 1964, years ago. His name was Muhammad Salem. So what we have here is the building now of this, of this left-wing, quote-unquote, socialist, communist, black, I call it the majority savage. Why do I say majority savage black opposed to minority civil black? Because white people don't want to live around black people. You know why? Because they constantly hurt us. They rob us. They rape us. They beat us up. They kill us. That's why white people move out of black communities and we don't want to live around them because white people move out of black communities and we don't want to live around them because they generally hate us and commit crimes against us every day. That's a fact, my friend. Listen. That's why I advocate racial separation unto nationhood. Blacks need their own country. We white unto nationhood. Blacks need their own country. We white Bible believers need ours. And the white Roman Catholics can continue to destroy whatever they touch. Because that's what they do. There's not one nation in history that's been a white Roman Catholic nation that ever established a republic based upon, a, based upon the Bible. Not one. Established a republic based upon, a, based upon the Bible. Not one. No, I don't want to live around those white people. Uh-uh. Let's say repent and denounce the temporal power of the Pope and say, yes, indeed, we've been blessed and we've had a wonderful time in a Bible-based Republican constitutional republic, and therefore we don't think it's Republican constitutional republic, and therefore we don't think we need to be Roman Catholics anymore. We're going to embrace the real Bible because we don't read the Bible in the Catholic Church. So this is what they want. And you have the right-wing Roman Catholics and Catholics at Fox News, which the vast majority of what Sean Hannity says, I totally agree with. 
because he is advocating policies based upon biblical principles, even though he's a Roman Catholic. So you have those people, but never, and then you have Matthews, that left-wing Roman Catholic. Then you always have to have the left-wing Jews like like uh, Rachel Madoff on MSNBC, and then Geraldo Rivera on Fox News. He's a left-wing socialist, communist Jew, pro-Hispanic invasion, anti-white. That's what he is. He won't say it because he's dishonest. Because Geraldo Rivera, AFK, and that's why he is worshipped as such a wonderful man. Makes me sick every time I look at him. I see treason all over his face. So <clears throat> they're turning it up. And by the way, or to France or to the Monte Carlo or wherever, and they're going to be basking in the sun with their millions of dollars. Remember, Geraldo Rivera is a multimillionaire. Bill O'Reilly's a multimillionaire. Sean Hannity is a multimillionaire. Chris Matthews is a multimillionaire. Charlie Rose is a multimillionaire. All Charlie Rose is a multimillionaire. All these Roman Catholic sinners are multimillionaires, and they couldn't care less about those of us. We got to struggle from week to week, month to month. They just want to use us as the cannon fodder. Some on the right, quote unquote. Some on the left, quote unquote on the right, quote-unquote, some on the left, quote-unquote, to fight with one another, to hate each other, to ultimately damage one another, to kill each other, so they can then impose what they've wanted to impose all along. It's fascism. The Jesuits told us they want to impose fascism. The merging of business with government exactly as was done in Germany. And by the way, the fascists would have never come to power in Germany had Bavaria not been under communism for some 19 months before 18 months before Hitler comes to power. And the man who would become Pope Pius XII would give Hitler a bag of gold and say, go out and do God's will and fight the communists. Where, where do you find that fact? You find it in the tremendous book, La Popesa. Get, would give Hitler a bag of gold and say, go out and do God's will and fight the communists. Where, where do you find that fact? You find it in the tremendous book, La Popesa. Get it. Read it. That nun that was the concubine for Pius XII. And the book was written about her. That's what she said she saw. Eugenio Pacelli giving a bag of gold to Hitler. Go and do the will of God. That's right, Roman Catholic. Why don't you report that, Bill O'Reilly? The Pope giving a bag of gold. Isn't that right, Laura Ingram? Huh? We can't. We can't ever bring Roman Catholicism into question, can we? We can't ever examine his past history, can we? And look at his bloody hands. Murderers and persecutors that they are. Preterers and persecutors that they are. Pretending to be quote-unquote Christians. A Roman Catholic is no Christian. They're Roman Catholics. I used to do, go door-to-door -door uh, when I was in Bible college up in Scranton. We used to go to some of these people's doors and talk about uh, the gospel and Christ and invite them to Christ and invite them to come to our church. And they'd say, no, we're Roman Catholics. We're not Christians. We're Roman Catholics. That's what he say. I'm not a Christian. I'm a Roman Catholic. And these Roman Catholics are the font of all the agitation among the black community, Protestants, Bible-believing Protestants, we don't do that. And Baptists, I'm a Baptist, I'm not a Protestant. But we don't do that. We seek to, to do right to the blacks. We sought to repatriate them back to Africa. Bought a country for them called Liberia. We built a capital city for them called Monrovia. And we we're having gradual emancipation till the Jesuits caused the war between the states and crushed the Democratic South and threw all the blacks onto the streets so that the radical red Republicans in the North could start their socialism called the Freedmen's Bureau. And their Civil Rights Act of 1866. And their Civil Rights Act of 1866. Use the blacks to impose communism 
while just beginning to destroy the middle class first in the South and then in the North. The blacks have always been used by these white devils. Remembering what Jefferson said, both races equally free cannot, cannot live under the same government. You read the book Race and Reason by, by uh, Carlton Putnam, former head of Delta Airlines. So, this is what they're fomenting. And Donald Trump's no one to be messed with. They're feigning that the intelligence community is at war with Donald Trump. That is absolute hogwash. No one to be messed with. They're feigning that the intelligence community is at war with Donald Trump. That is absolute hogwash. If the intelligence community was against Trump, they'd have killed him during his campaign, just like they killed Bobby Kennedy in Los Angeles in 1968. Campaign, just like they killed Bobby Kennedy in Los Angeles in 1968. Trump has hired Blackwater to be his bodyguard. And those boys aren't anybody to mess with either. If you they went around confiscating guns. And that's what they're going to do, try to do on a national level. But they're going to be, quote unquote, protecting Trump. Nobody's touching Trump. He's protected by the Knights of Malta. The men who run Blackwater are Knights of Malta. Back in a moment. This is 24-7 World Radio, and you're listening to The Eric John Phelps Show. This is Brother Jack. I invite you to listen to my broadcast on 247worldradio.com. I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore, I defend the Reformation in Poland, Polish Protestants and Baptists, and Polish Reformation Bible. I also expose the Counter-Reformation in my homeland, led by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic Institution. Join me every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 24-7 Standard Time on 24-7 worldradio.com. Tu Bat Jacek, zapraszam Was do wysłuchania mojej audycji na 247 worldradio.com. Głoszę Ewangelię Pana Jezusa Chrystusa ludziom mówiącym po polsku rozproszonym po całym świecie. Ponadto bronię reformacji w Polsce, polskich protestantów i baptystów oraz polskiej bibliotek reformacji w mojej ojczyźnie kierowaną przez jezuitów i przez rzymsko-katolicką instytucję. Dołącz do mnie w każdy czwartek o godzinie 17 czasu wschodnioamerykańskiego na 247worldradio.com. This is brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Bruder Nicolas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags, amerikanische Zeit, für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Dit is Bruder Nico. U bent hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om 2 uur amerikaanse standardtijd het Duitse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen en 3 uur amerikaanse standardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen. Op 24-7. This is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24-7 World Radio. And 
you want to ask yourself you want to ask yourself why 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 this topic You want to ask yourself why this topic is not spoken of by the called left. Why is it that nobody in the media, Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity or Bill O'Reilly or, or Jeff Beck or Laura Ingram, or Neil Cavuto, or Brett Bear. Why do none of those people talk about the Jesuits and their past and what they've done? Because, because they're all, quote unquote, good Catholics. Megan Kelly, thank God she's gone to Fox and she's gone with her, with her communist number over there in NBC. But, um, uh, they're all Roman Catholics. You think these Roman Catholic, you think these Roman Catholic traitors and conspirators are ever going to come out and tell you about the Jesuits? Do you ever think they're going to tell you that Pope Clement the Fourteenth, with a papal bull, suppressed the Jesuit or the Jesuit order suppressed? and extinguish the Society of Jesus forever on September 21st, 1773? They're never going to tell you that because then they're going to have to tell you why. And they don't want you to, Lawrence O'Donnell with MSNBC, with his final word. And that Pope serving Jewess, Rachel Madoff, and that Roman Catholic Jesuit trained, Holy Cross Jesuit trained, Chris Matthews. Uh, why is it that none of them ever tell you about the Jesuit order? Why is it that the left wing socialist communist Don, Le the black Don Lemon, never tells you about the Jesuit order? The Jesuit order. Why? Why is it that Charlie Rose interviewing all these different people? Why is it that he never talks about the power of the Jesuit order? Henry Kissinger and Chucky Schumer, senator out of New York. How come none of these guys ever tell you about the power of the Jesuit order and the Knights of Malta? Why not? Because they are slop-sucking, tending that they are truly uh, sincere and loyal to the people that they represent. It's a game. It's an act. They're actors in a stage play. And the last thing they would ever want to do is talk to you about the power of the Jesuit order of its past, of its, to you about the power of the Jesuit order of its past, of its present, and of its future design, because then they'd have to eat all their words when they were mocking and putting down all the quote-unquote conspiracy theorists, because this is one huge, grand Jesuit conspiracy. conspiracy. In fact, you can get a book titled The Jesuit Conspiracy by Abbe Leon, written in 1848. I have it with my Vatican Assassins on my 13 rare book CD disc, CD. The Jesuit Conspiracy by Abbe Leon. You need to get it. All the big network network owners are high-level Roman Catholics and or Masonic Jews loyal to the Pope of Rome. Rupert Murdoch, one of the ten most powerful media moguls in the world, is a is a Rome is a is a Roman Catholic. He ain't no Jew. 
He is a Roman Catholic Knight of the Equestrian Order, which is higher, and he's also a Knight of Malta. But the Equestrians are higher than the Knights of Malta. The Knights of the Equestrian Order are the Knights of Malta. The Knights of the Equestrian Order are led by Roman Catholic Cardinals. The Knights of the Equestrian Order guard the Jesuit headquarters in Rome called Borgo Santo Spirito. Just outside Vatican walls, it's the Knights of the Equestrian Order that guard that headquarters of the Jesuits. The Equestrian Order that guard that headquarters of the Jesuits. And Rupert Murdoch is a Knight of the Equestrian Order. White people, listen to me, please. Listen to me, please. We're being used. We're being played. And especially white people that read the Bible, that are saved by the grace of God, who have the Lord Jesus Christ indwelling them, sealed the Holy Spirit having Christ indwelling them, sealed the Holy Spirit having sealed us to the day of redemption, having truly been brought into the body of Christ, made a citizen of heaven, Philippians 3.20. I mean, for those of us specifically that have the power to resist this because it's the devil's mystery of iniquity, we need to wake up and read this whole quote-unquote election and the opposition, be it Republican opposition or Democratic opposition to Donald Trump, it has been all fashioned and coordinated and orchestrated by high level Jesuits run because the end game of the Jesuit order is to impose a right wing military dictator who I've always said would be a white man and a 33rd degree Freemason and an apostate Protestant. He won't be Catholic. And then when they impose this through various outrages, he will become a right-wing dictator. And I can tell you the lady who taught me this 20 years ago, years ago, her name was Betty Mills. Betty Mills used to write for the Mantooth Report. Betty, Betty Mills had courage. Betty Mills' husband was in Patton's army. And he told her, honey, General Patton's not coming home. He will be killed here in Germany. You read the book, Target Patton. Don't read Bill O'Reilly's Killing Patton. Read Target Patton. And so Betty Mills taught me these things. She, she, she got up at an NRA meeting and she said to all of them, you people here don't have a damn thing to offer me. And she got up and walked out from the NRA. Nation. It was run by a high-level Freemason, Harlan Carter, at the time. The NRA is a phony, baloney operation driving us white men to think it's really on our side for gun ownership. Constant part of the Democratic Party and whatever political leader it is, whether it's Clinton, Obama, Carter, whatever, they all want to grab your guns. They want to take your guns from you so that you're disarmed so when they impose their fascist military dictator like Hitler, you won't be able to defend against his black, black, black SS, black, black, black SS or brown shirts. Or when we're invaded by a foreign army, we can't defend ourselves and shoot them. We've been played. And the reason why we white men, the reason why we white men and those white men of us in Christ, the reason why we've been played is because the preachers, and this includes Dr. Peter Ruckman, they will not tell you what was done in the past by the Puritans and those who believe the Bible to break the temporal power of the Pope. And those who believe the Bible to break the temporal power of the Pope. Even though Dr. Ruckman said many good things that I agree with, his church was 501c3. Apostate. It wasn't 501 Apostate. It wasn't 508C1A to my knowledge. If he was, please correct me. 
501 501c3. He never advocated a righteous resistance to a government that had been coming tyranny, and this military government since coming tyranny, and this military government since March 9, 1933, as did Lex Rex, written by Rutherford. You see, one of the doctrines of the Reformation is that the Puritans championed, and there's no political liberty in the world. Saxon, Protestant, Puritans, and Baptist Puritans. There's no political liberty at all without those people. You read the two-volume work by Campbell titled The Puritans in Holland, England, and America. The Puritans in Holland, England, and America by Campbell. No true liberty without these men who believed the Bible and went to the battlefield to resist political tyranny. That is Protestant. That is Baptist. That is Calvinistic. That is Bible. But what are you going to hear in all your churches? But what are you going to hear in all your churches today? Just do what you're told. Obey every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, thereby taking that beautiful scripture and twisting it and perverting it into submitting to satanic papal tyranny. I tell you what, as a man, as a man, I could never follow a, a Christian leader if he was a wimpy, gutless wonder submitting to political tyranny. That's why you don't find very many men in church this fight in their life. They probably never worked hard all day long, tying rebar, pouring concrete, ra raising a house, whatever. They've been, they're limp wristers. They're wimpy. They're in a little ivory tower study, and they're advocating me submit to a tyranny. I don't have time for those people. The Puritan preachers, Peters, and others in Cromwell's day, the Puritan preachers in George Washington's day, advocated absolutely resistance to political tyranny when it was in fact overthrowing our faith and our institutions established by the, the our churches that we have established by the, the our churches that we have shed so much blood to establish. Fighting the papacy. You see, if I can rip out of your mind your responsibility to resist political tyranny, I can destroy the Reformation. Roman Catholic, not a Columbus, Tip O'Neill said, power is never given. It is always taken. Power is never given. It is always taken. And you can read that in the book, The Man of the House. Tip O'Neill. So, what do we have today? We have all these false Bibles. We have 501c3 churches that are united with the government. We have all the Christian people are sureties for a stranger. They're all people are sureties for a stranger. They're all surety trustees for this all caps entity. This on your driver's license and credit card and passport and you name it. And now we're imbibing the doctrine of non-resistance to tyranny. Doctrine of non-resistance to tyranny. Romans 13 was never written to defend tyranny. 1 Peter 2 was never written to defend tyranny. God instituted government for pun God instituted government for punishing evil and rewarding good. And without government, we have anarchy. And without anarchy, we have tribal chiefs and dictators and savage leaders that have the power to kill at their whim because they're in charge of the armies. And that's what's coming here. Because the, Christ, the preachers of this country, Baptists and spe specifically, having imbibed the doctrine of free will, free willism, always going to submit, they're going to submit to governmental tyranny. But the Calvinists who believe in predestination, 
and that God is working all things after the counsel of his will and that he has an elect that he will save, those men say, "Uh uh-uh, we're not submitting to political tyranny. And say, "Uh uh-uh, we're not submitting to political tyranny because it is sin to submit to it. And this is what's coming here. We've had political tyranny since March 9th, 1933, when the Jesuits imposed military government with Proclamation 2040. 2040 and the House approving and confirming it with the Emergency Banking Relief Act. March 9th, 1933 was the government in this country. And we have been under a military government, not martial law, military government from that day. And shortly before that, they passed the 20th Amendment so that the president will be inaugurated as his commander in chief on January 20th, no longer March 4th. Because that's the day the commander in chief of the military government is inaugurated. When was the last time your preacher, your civics teacher, or somebody on the news ever, or civics teacher, or somebody on the news ever told you that? And this is something, by the way, no newscaster will deal with. Because they hate you. And we just want to tell the truth. Back in a moment after prayer. is the Eric John Phelps show on 24/7 World Radio. This is Brother Jack. I invite you to listen to my broadcast on 24/7 worldradio.com. I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Polish speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore.com. I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Polish speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore, I defend the Reformation in Poland, Polish Protestants and Baptists, and Polish Reformation Bible. I also expose the Counter-Reformation in my homeland, led by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic Institution. Join me every Thursday institution. Join me every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 247worldradio.com. Tu brat Jacek, zapraszam Was do wysłuchania mojej audycji na 247 worldradio.com. Głoszę Ewangelię Pana Jezusa Chrystusa ludziom mówiącym po polsku rozproszonym po całym świecie. Ponadto bronię reformację kierowaną przez jezuitów i przez rzymsko-katolicką instytucję. Dołącz do mnie w każdy czwartek o godzinie 17 czasu wschodnioamerykańskiego na 247worldradio.com. This is 24-7 World Radio and you're listening to 7 World Radio and you're listening to the Eric John Phelps Show. Kind of ad libbing in a rant. I hope you um, are finding this helpful. Libbing in a rant. I hope you um, are finding this helpful. Now, again, as I mentioned previously, Betty Mills, who's has passed away. She taught me much. She taught me much about the imposition of fascism. She taught me much about the power of the Knights of Malta. She taught me much about William J. Casey that night of Malta. Dear friend was Oliver North. Oliver North, that traitor. And yet the vast majority of white people think Oliver North's a great guy. I mean, what's your problem? Have we lost our ability for critical thinking? Have we lost the reaction and Baptist Calvinistic Bible-based republic and its civilian government since its inception? Have we lost that 
understanding? Do we really believe that all people are Christians to say they're Christians, the Mormons, the Catholics, whatever? Do we really believe we can just all get along together when the doctrine of these institutions, specifically Roman Catholicism, calls for our death, persecution and death, just like Islam, a little whore of the Pope? Yes, Islam created by the Pope. Quran. Yes, Islam created by the Pope. Quran written in the Vatican. Muhammad tutored by Augustinian priests. Come on, Muslims, wake up. Arab suckers, don't you realize you've been a sucker for the false god Allah and his false prophet, pedophile Muhammad? Am I going to tell you the truth? And unfortunately, one of the first things that happens, you get mad about it. Want to kill the infidel. I told you the truth, man. I'm going to die and so are you. And we're both going to be judged. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. You're going to get judged too, Muslim. Christ of the very God-man, God manifest in the flesh, that came to die for your sins. And you could have had a free pardon, but oh no. So what we have here is the Jesuits. The Jesuits have built up this six-sided enemy to be taken down by the fascist military dictator and his stormtroopers that will be ex-Delta Force and Green Beret, Eels. I tell you, the military's angry. It's angry with Barry Davis, a.k.a. Barack Hussein Obama. They're furious, and they're backing Trump to the T. And now that Barry has released these two traitors, treason should be put to death that one little wimpy white dude who thinks he's a woman uh, released all those thousands of documents betraying the intelligence of the army he needs to die not 35 years in jail death and make it public so I can attend and make it public so I can attend and have a little party when he's dangling by the end of a rope and I, so I can bring my children and say, that's what's going to happen to you, son, if you commit treason and you betray your people. Yeah, it's an educational experience. Capital punishment is an educational experience. And it ought, capital punishment is an educational experience. And it ought to be made public. Especially for treason. Because whenever you commit treason, somebody dies. The Bible condemns treason. In the last days, the Bible condemns treason. In the last days, perilous times shall arise. Men shall be lovers of themselves, heady, high minded, traitors. So now, Barry, step and fetch it. The mulatto. Barry, step and fetch it, has done exactly what his white man. Barry, step and fetch it, has done exactly what his white master told him to do. Uh, Joe Biden, boy. And they say, hey, boy, I want you now to release these traitors to further infuriate these white people and to further infuriate the military so they all gather around Donald Trump for justice. All gather around Donald Trump for justice. And Barry, the high-level black Freemason that he is, step and fetch it. Yes, boss. Yes, Joe Biden, Roman Catholic, white devil, has two honorary Jesuit degrees. Yes, boss. Uh, Barry knows who butters his bread, and he knows he better never cross Joe Biden, or he'll be pushing up Davies, just like Kennedy. He's never once crossed Joe Biden. But the press will never tell you that. The press wants you to think he's some kind of an idiot. I watched O'Reilly and those, those, those liars try to portray Joe Biden as some kind of an idiot incompetent. Joe Biden runs the White House along with the office of the president. Man, this, that's a powerful office. They run, they run the Department of Homeland Security. 
a Jesuit trained Irish Roman Catholic, Dennis McDonough, runs it. And he is bosom buddies with Joe Biden. Another brother Irish Catholic. All the Irish Catholics there in the White House having a wonderful day. Reduce the Holy Father. By implementing fascism. Well done, Barry. You really did it. Barry Davis Obama created Donald Trump. The outrages of the Obama administration. I can't think of, of the Obama administration. I can't think of one thing he ever did that was good, has created the outrage among white people, a.k.a. the Tea Party and others, and therefore the, the bringing to power of Donald Trump because the, the, the networks run by the Pope just doctored up all the elections and made sure that Trump was elected, just like they did with Obama. And doctored those all about, made sure he was elected. That's how it's been since LBJ, since 1964, with the News Election Service. The NES controls the elections. Read the book Vote Scam by Collier. To think we have elections, are we crazy? Not when the Pope runs the press and the leaders of both parties. Are we nuts? We, I'll tell you, we're not nuts. We've just, we are nuts because we've departed from the Bible. The great key to understand the key to understand the devil's mystery of iniquity as he's waging war against the Reformation West out of the Vatican with his Jesuits. And the only men that ever beat it were men that read this book. Particularly white men. So now they've got Trump there. More and more sympathy. And you can know that there'll be CIA operatives within the, the quote-unquote left-wing agitators to try to bring the crowd to violence. To justify draconian responses. And the people of the country will say, God, God, shoot them, round them up, send them to the camps. That's where they belong. And they do belong there. They do belong there. But now they're going to have a long there. But now they're going to have a reason to do it. The FEMA camps are ready to open. They're ready for business. And that's what we're heading towards. And then you couple that. And then you couple that. You couple this. This black on white race war, this left on right race war, you couple that going viral and ballistic, you couple that with the Jesuit order's Muslim presence and ultimately uh, blaming Iran for the building in Washington, you, bl you, you add that to the mix, you're going to have martial law. Foreign troops in the streets, Germans, French, English, Dutch, as NATO response forces, and they're going to be rounding up, for the most part, hate American blacks. They've been victims of all the black on white rape when the black American soldiers were stationed in Germany and France and England. And those sons and those daughters remember what was done to their parents and their grandparents, and they're getting ready for vengeance. This payback time, baby. Vengeance. This payback time, baby. I watched a German troop with machine gunners, and as they're practicing, they say, Hey there, mother effer. Die, mother effer. The Germans, with their special German accent, saying those two words together, which are the favorite words together, which are the favorite words of the, of the savage blacks. They're practicing for occupying American cities. Killing the blacks in general. That's what they're doing. So you couple the demo 9-11 was an inside job, which, by the way, neither network will admit to. And when you do that, now you have the recipe for the people in Britain, the white people of this country embracing fascism. When, I don't know, 
Hopefully the Lord will set it back for a few years. But if things are going as they are, this is exactly what they're going to do. And there will be a six-sided enemy that the fascists will go after. Listen carefully. The fascists will be going after. The fascists will be going after the majority savage blacks. Maybe even all the blacks in general. But many of them. Who, tell me, do you think all these shootings and killings in Chicago is just a co shootings and killings in Chicago is just a coincidence? With the blacks killing each other? Do you think that's just a coincidence? Or do you think there's certain agitators among the blacks of Chicago to kill each other? To kill each other? And if there are these agitators, where are they? Who, with whom are they affiliated? Do you think it's just coincidence? Do you think it's just happenstance? Listen, FDR was right when he said, if black on black on black murder with the gangland slings during the Obama administration, all agitated by certain agitators to justify martial law in Chicago. That Catholic priest, that white devil, Father Flager, is a part of it somehow. It's what the Jesuits want. And you can know there's certain agitators that are intimately involved with Loyola University in Chicago. It has to be so. As they advise the Archbishop of Chicago, you can know it. As they advise the Archbishop of Chicago, you can know it. And don't you think for one minute Louis Farrakhan is not separate from the Archbishop of Chicago and his Nation of Islam and his Fruit of Islam? Don't you think for one second they're standing idly by doing nothing? Some nexus there with the Roman hierarchy to bring all the major cities into martial law. As I said, that's why they ran the dope in all the black communities. So they can go violent and savage. They're laughing too. Laughing at those black fools. And you know what they're laughing at also? They're laughing at the black leadership that doesn't have the guts enough to say anything about it. I told this to one black lady who came to my class. She said, well, the reason for that, Eric, is because these black men don't want to die. I said, what is better? To live, I said, what is better? To live in, under this, under a tyranny, under a military government tyranny, or to do what is right and maybe pay with your life if necessary. What is better? What is righteous? What's the right thing to do? You see, a real man doesn't take into account. You see, a real man doesn't take into account his life and will give it for the, for the purpose for delivering his people. So that's what we have today. That's what we have today. A bunch of godless, atheistic, gutless, Bible-rejecting, Christ-hating leaders within the white structure as well as the black structure, as well as the Hispanic structure. All many, the top ones working for sure. All many, the top ones working for the Pope to impose military government here, aided and abetted by Vladimir Putin, who's just as much of a dictator as Joseph Stalin, both of them controlled by the Jesuits. The Jesuits. Hey, MSNBC, you talk about Trump and Putin together, why don't you talk that they both have Jesuit connections? Because you work for the Jesuits, that's why. That's why you, they pay you, a, your, they give, right, give you your paycheck. You don't judgment someday. So that's my analysis of the news today. That's my analysis of what's happening here. And would God in his wonderful, marvelous, and providence raise up some preachers to start preaching the truth, no matter if God-haters, porn addicts, 
dope addicts that have rejected Christ, rejected the Bible, been educated to be atheists, and would to God he would send a great awakening before it's too late, because he can. And that's one of the purposes of this broadcast, to call for a great awakening. That's one of the purposes of this broadcast, to call for a great awakening, that men would truly repent and believe the gospel, that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again, so you can have all your sins, every last one of them, washed away with his blood. And when that happens, and he will answer your prayers if you're serious about it. That's my prayer for all of us. So with this analysis, we pray a little bit before we go into the second half. With Eric John Phelps. What's up? This is the Eric John Phelps Show.